Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to learn all about edge highlighting. Trust me, we're going to make it easy. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Edge highlighting is a thing that I think often confounds people. And today we're going to break down exactly how to go about this process, because it's actually pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of practice, control, and most importantly, the properly thinned paints. But uh, don't worry, we're going to show, talk about some of the common pitfalls, and most importantly, how you correct your mistakes when they happen, because don't worry, they will happen, and it's not the end of the world. First and most important thing, before we even head over to the desk, when you've got the need to edge highlight a miniature, you're going to want to get out a nice, sharp uh, brush. You don't want anything too large. Something like a size zero is going to be perfect. Nothing too large, nothing too small. Too small, the paint dries too quickly. Too large, it's too hard to control, and then you end up making very fat lines. We want that middle bowl of porridge here, right? That middle bed that's just right. And that's going to be something like a size zero brush. You want a good sharp tip because as you'll see later, that's going to come into play in multiple applications of this process. So a nice sharp brush is step one. Now, to go to step two, we're going to head over to the desk and I'm going to actually show you how we thin the paint, what you do with the various sort of thinnesses of paint, how we apply it, and so on. Let's get over there. All right, let's start with the paint, because this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. That's paint straight from the pot on my wet palette. I'm going to make a little pool of it over here on the side. And so let's get about, you know, three sort of brushfuls, or, or and by that I mean just the tip there, but brushfuls of paint. And then I'm going to put in one little dab of water, maybe a little more paint to get it thick. And then I draw out the brush. You saw how I tilted it there and drew it out. That lets me then get these nice, thin, flowing lines. So you want fresh paint straight out of the pot. Don't try to use old paint. You want a little bit of water in there, but you want it relatively thick. Then when we head over to the miniature, we're going to start very light. And this is the key. Notice how, notice how much I have choked up on my grip on the brush. Uh, you want to make sure you're very, 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 like as close as you can get to the top of that brush with its handle when you're trying to get into tight spaces. Sometimes you'll need to move farther, as you'll see me do here, but I'm very choked up on, on how I'm holding the brush. And my, my strike against the miniature is very, very light, and importantly, I'm using the side of the brush. I'm not trying to trace the line. Notice how the tip isn't even being used. Now, so why do we need a sharp brush? Well, because you still want to, to come to a really fine point because you're going to need to occasionally in spaces like this under his leg, go all the way down to the tip of your brush or, or on these sorts of spaces where I need to get in there and there's other things going on. The more I have a nice sharp tip, uh, the more that I can, I can work uh, in those smaller spaces. The other thing that's really important here is that you go back to the fresh paint regularly. Don't try to sit there and edge highlight the whole miniature. So you see how I go back, I get fresh paint. You saw again, I twisted my brush against the wet palette and drew it out. Right? That's to reinstantiate that nice sharp tip, get that flowing paint full in the belly of the brush, and then I just make my way around the miniature, almost completely working with just the side of the brush. And exactly where I strike, I'll use as deep into the belly as I can. In other words, I'll, I'll you know, like I'm, I'm using as far down on the brush as I possibly can. But some spaces require me to be very, very light touch, so I'm only using that. Notice how when my brush touches the surface, it doesn't bend at all, right? And that's because I am just barely putting any pressure on this. At a deeper level, you'll notice how I often am swinging and striking at this multiple times. Like you see how I'm almost uh, hashing at it, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And oftentimes the first time I strike, I don't even actually leave a mark. And that's because in those very careful spaces where I need to be super precise, I'm actually 
practicing up, leading up to the motion. So, nice flowing paint, nice sharp brush, using the side of the brush, choking up on the brush as much as possible, and now comes a little secret thing that I'm doing here you might not have even realized and made filming this an absolute pain in the rear. But that is rotate the miniature. Hold your, this is really hard to film because I have like a two inches of depth of field, so I'm sorry if I'm slightly out of focus in some shots. But keep your brush in the place that is comfortable. Rotate the miniature. Now, sometimes you will have areas like this, like this line, where there's no way to use the, the side of your brush reasonably without getting a fat line. In that case, you go right back to your fresh paint, you trace a few thin lines, and then you're done. That's it. Rinse your brush, get fresh paint again, trace a few more thin lines. Don't try to keep stretching it out because when you're doing something like this, the tip is naturally going to bend. And when it bends, it's going to go a different direction. Like you see there, when I tried to stretch that long line at the end, we got all fat down at the bottom. See that fat spot right there where my finger just touched? Don't worry, we're going to fix it. Like many things, the key with this is really all in the wrist or I guess the fingers or something. The point being, you want to make sure that you are uh, touching the miniature very, 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 very gently. And you see many times in this video, as I've mentioned, how I swipe at it very carefully and then only very lightly make contact. So by sort of easing your way into it, you make sure that you just get that nice light strike on the actual corner that you're aiming at. Don't feel like you've got to do it all in one hard stroke. I see people attack it, the brush bends, that's not what you want to happen. You want a nice, even extremely low pressure slide across that edge. When your paint's well flowing, as I did earlier, you're going to have a perfectly great time edge highlighting. When you are doing this process, you will mess up and that's okay. I fat fingered some spaces here with all of this and it's fine. We, what we do is we don't try anything more complicated than we go get our original base tone color, which in this case for me was Abaddon Black. And I'm going to then, you see how I'm way far away from the edge with that first strike? I start the paint nowhere near the edge and I start tracing lines down, slowly pushing in toward the edge, thinning the edge out. I can come back, I can work with the tip in a comfortable way, and I can work my way around the miniature, again, starting in these areas, anywhere where I messed up an edge, like right there. And I start in an area nowhere near the edge and then push my way toward it, push my way toward it. And you can really get your lines ultra, ultra sharp with by starting in the middle and pushing toward the edge. Now, the other key to good, good edge highlighting is to have multiple different layers of it. That's right, we don't have to do this annoying task once. It looks best when you do it multiple times. Now, here I'm gonna make a huge value jump just so you can really see what's going on. When you're doing these lighter colors that aren't gonna color everything, now we're going thinner. So here, I'm more one-to-one -one paint to water. You can see how when I draw it out, you see how it spreads? Okay. This is like one-to-one -one paint to water, much more thin. I wick off the excess liquid in a paper towel. Extremely important that my brush touches a paper towel before it touches a miniature to wick off that excess liquid. Now that thinner paint will go on rather strong and bright, but then as it dries, it will become more transparent. And the reason I want that is because I want it to be thinner even than my initial line. Sorry for his big giant sword being in the way there for a moment. And I'm only with this, with these secondary colors, I'm not going to retrace every line. Instead, I'm going to focus on the upward facing angles. So anything that's sort of a, 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 an area of, you know, facing, any edge facing directly up toward the top of the miniature. And you can see I can do it with the, uh, the edge is there, I can do it with anything I need. Now, this, depending on how much you want to value jump in here, like I said, I'm going very high, you don't have to jump this far. You may want to go back with your original tone, thin it down to this layer and sort of glaze the edge, do a little glaze edge highlight to bring them together. 
but it's not strictly necessary, especially if you're just trying to get a nice looking, uh, high quality tabletop army out there. But I worked my way around the miniature again, just hitting the upward facing angles. Again, all of those spaces that are facing directly up in the air, but the same rules apply. Notice that I'm taking multiple strikes to get my edges. Notice that I'm, I'm oftentimes uh, missing and then slowly working my way there. I frequently go back and get new fresh paint to make sure that my paint will continue flowing. So get that fresh paint, get that sharp brush, go back to your paint often. At least once every like 30 seconds to a minute, you need to be back in that paint. The reason you want to just face up is because then those lights will be sort of natural with the, the sort of weaker reflections on the bottom side and the stronger reflections facing up. Then it's just a matter of working your way around the miniature and hitting all those upward facing spaces. Once again, if you make any mistakes here with this, you can do the exact same thing, coming back in with the black or your original color and thinning out the line. That doesn't change at all. With these tips combined, you will too will be a master of edge highlighting. There we go. My uh, Tau Commander Farsight here is all edge highlighted up. There's still some more details to do on him, of course. I've got to pick all the rest of the things out that aren't uh, black metal. His little Tron scheme is done, though. Uh, but I hope this helped answer your questions about edge highlighting. If it did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions that I didn't answer here, drop them down below. I always answer every question asked. If you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.